what what does FIFA love? I mean, they love history. Yeah, but then they love executive suites where they yes. can make a little bit more money. Yes. Oh, a whole lot more. To the football and the announcement you alluded to earlier last Thursday in a somewhat surreal broadcast that was somewhere <laughs> between Charity Telethon and American Ninja Warrior. FIFA announced the host cities for the 2026 World Cup in America, Mexico and Canada, the NAFTA territories. A lot to be excited about, but plenty to lament as well. God, you know, I am still reeling from that hour of television Thursday evening. Essentially, I've come to call it a FIFA acid dream of a World Cup reveal. I mean, this weekend, football was sparse. So all I've done all weekend is just watch that hour-long broadcast on repeat. And I've come to realize it's a television classic, Davo. What did you make of it? Because it was, I'd say it was a... A departure from FIFA's normally, you know, tight suited, uh, buttoned up, was slightly, well, most of their presentations are slightly surreal, but this one was next level. Yeah, it was odd. I wonder who really was behind this. Was this a Fox production? Was it a Telemundo production? Was it a FIFA production? Uh, hard to tell, but it was. I think, um, I think it was a Tommy Wiseau production by the. Uh, <laughs> by the if you didn't see it, Anna Yurka of Telemundo who we had the pleasure of meeting when we were at the um, the Los the Angeles Fan Fest, Fan Fest right? Yeah. A, I mean, re really, someone who does incredible work on Telemundo. And she stole the show, essentially, and it's on our Instagram if you've not seen it, essentially she did comedy bits with Johnny Infantino. Um, yeah. When Boston was named as a host city, she just screamed out, Benifa! And yeah. Johnny Infantino, Dave, clearly has no idea who that is, right? Well, she was in the Kelly Ripper role, Rog. Yeah. He was he was Ryan Seacrest, like yep. living the dream. Johnny Infantino, live LTD. He would announce the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, she would then exclaim something, and then he would have to then come <laughs> and do the color afterwards. I mean, whoever was producing this, yeah. this was like probably not the way to go and do it. They weren't. They didn't seem incredibly prepared for the bants. You don't think? <laughs> chemistry i thought they had great chemistry i mean she she screamed benefit benefit and johnny infantino in that moment was trying to rack his brain as to who benefit could be and to be fair you know if it's not a cutout man dropping off bribes the chances of johnny infantino knowing your name is is very very <laughs> slim but then it kept going on she kept shouting out more and more things they were not connecting on many i'll be honest but then miami was named oh. as a city. And I don't know, she melted down. It was fantastic. She was very excited to hear Miami. A bit yep. of salsa dancing. Yeah, she did a little dance. Mojito, she screamed. Yeah. And, yeah. and Johnny, God love him. <laughs> David, I mean, you know, you know the Johnny type more than I do. Yeah. He doesn't really know how to react because how he'd naturally react would be in the privacy of his private plane. But he knows yeah. he's on live TV, so he's got to be pretend to be unaffected by Anna's kind of excitement. Yeah. And so it's just, it's like, oh. It's, it's, and, it's, and I think she then realized in that moment that yep. she might have made him a little bit uncomfortable. Yep. And, uh, and she does a logical of, thing, logical next thing. Squeal. Yeah, she looks at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take me to HR. And, yeah. and for a second, this is the most amazing moment of television. If you slow it down, you can see Johnny in that second is completely lost because he can't believe that Anna doesn't know. FIFA has no HR. <laughs> Although, not a bad idea. There's probably someone getting paid. That doesn't mean there isn't an entire department yep. of HR people getting paid, you know, in Rolexes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, gold bars, yep. various rare forms of crypto and NFTs yep. to run the HR department. Yeah, they FIFA. I think they own NFTs that say, yeah. I look, honk, <laughs> honk, and I look the other way. You know, the, <laughs> I think the head of HR for FIFA is called Johnny Infantino. But it yeah. was, it was really, it was really just, it was. I mean, God, maybe it was, maybe it worked, Davo, because it was just a city announcement. As many of you uh, tweeted at us, it could have been an email. But this has got us talking. Maybe it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. Oh. Yeah, it was it was tough to watch, but many things involving FIFA and UEFA <laughs> and uh, are tough to watch. Oh, so it was on brand. It was perfectly on brand. Uh, and the big news out of the announcement for the cities in Canada and Mexico and the US who will host 2026 is that Boston, 
which was said to be on the outside looking in, going into the actual announcements, you know, Gillette Stadium being way out of town and, yeah. and being a transport mayor on match day, was awarded hosting duties. Benefer and Washington, D.C., who put in a joint bid with Baltimore, the great city, was snubbed. Davo, only the third time in World Cup history that the nation's capital will not be hosting. And one of those was Tokyo, which did have three stadia in the region. What do you make of it all? Yeah, I mean, I thought that was a uh, a slightly bizarre decision. But, you know, there's, believe it or not, these yes. aren't just like, this isn't all done on the merits, Rog. There's probably quite a lot of <laughs> Believe it pressure. or not. I would be shocked if uh-huh. Fox were not yeah. somehow involved and the Kraft family and very powerful interests in the Boston region uh, weren't very, um, weren't crucial in, in, in getting, you know, a uh, in making Foxborough a World Cup city. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me, you know, I know there are cities excluded. Definitely Washington, Boston is a, is, is a shock. I was delighted to see, you know, that, you know, I think we're going to be in some amazing stadiums in Mexico. The Azteca is going to be wonderful uh, for, uh, you know, Monter- yeah, well, Monterey going to be like Stunning. amazing. Um, I think it's fantastic. Canada, what's it? Vancouver, uh, Toronto going to be going to be superb. Um but the uh, in Los Angeles, SoFi Stadium. What a rich soccer tradition, Rog. When we think of Los Angeles yep. soccer, are those amazing games we've seen at the Coliseum and the you know a site of a previous World Cup final, the Rose Bowl, mm-hmm. uh, that amazing Italy Brazil final in '94. All those amazing games where the US just did so well. But now we're going to go to SoFi Stadium. I think it's. Um, I mean, you were also annoyed about sad. the Coliseum, where you've watched many, many. Yeah, yeah. Years. The Coliseum is one of the is one of the you know the great sites of American soccer. Some of the you know, legendary games in the in in the eighties and nineties and earlier, Rod. So what what does FIFA love? I mean, they love history, yeah, but then they love executive suites where yes. they can make a little bit more money, yes. a whole lot more. So why would they want history? I I lamented that on Friday in the WGFOP pod. The that this you know we have a remarkable history that does flow through our nation's uh, past in uh, in terms of football on the women's side and the men's side and. To not celebrate uh, that really, it makes me ache in every regard. I believe Stan Kroenke, when he heard that Sofi had um, had gotten the award, uh, put out a press release saying, this is incredible. Um, I, I've never uh, cared about football before in my <laughs> life. I don't think I even own a football team, was his immediate response. And God bless um, in every regard to him. Sofi, I would be, you know, I would imagine Sofi is in the running for the final that. Um, or or New York will be, uh, or as uh, Anna Yerka shouted out, New York, New Jersey, the city that never sleeps, which I just love in every regard. New York, New Jersey, so good they named it twice. Um, uh, we actually on the DC tip, um, you know, we had long time GFOP at Reuters Zengali, a political journalist, tweet at us, um, and Lord, honestly, I think it was a humorous tweet, but there's actually probably something to it, knowing FIFA. Uh, she wrote, it's revenge against Loretta Lynch. And Dave, we know that FIFA has the memory of an elephant, right? Yeah, no, that's a very, very good point. It easily could be. But it's so bizarre that, like, you think of the iconography of the United States around the world and the fact that, you know, we're not going to be in the nation's capital. Of course, we're not in the Canadian capital either. Um but it's, uh, yeah, a little odd. FIFA, God bless, has the memory of an elephant when it comes to revenge or bribes. Those two things only. Honestly, truly devastating for fans in the D.C. Baltimore region. I really ache for them. This has, as you said up top, been one of the true hotbeds of soccer fandom in our nation. That whole area, the DMV, uh, D.C., top of the ratings for Premier League football uh, this year. Part of the challenge was logistical. The FedEx is really the my pillow of American Stadia. So they came to this kind of jerry rig situ where the fan fest was going to be in DC, believe on the mall. Uh, hence the joint bid with Baltimore, which is thrown together. The games would be hosted at the Ravens Stadium. And everyone I've spoken to who's seen the actual bid said a version of the fact that the planning committee in DC assumed that as the capital city, their bid was in the bag. And they kind of, they kind of slept at it, mailed it in, uh, feeling they didn't have to do a lot to clinch it. But the highlight of this whole thing was on Friday when an investigative journalist, Justin Fenton of the Baltimore Banner, 
actually asked the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott, the following. Uh, he said, can you comment on the Men in Blazers newsletter analysis that the DC Baltimore bid was, uh, was quote, both dysfunctional and logistically complex? And Mayor Scott, God bless, clearly not a great friend of the pod, reportedly replied, wrong, so wrong. So wrong when you say so wrong twice, David. Don't you, don't you find it it's more believable? I'm going to start saying that to you all the time on the he podcast said, now. He said everybody worked very well together. That, that, <laughs> Every, wasn't, that every, wasn't your, ana- was that your analysis. Everybody worked your analysis. well together and had a very strong proposal was the end of his quote. I think Mayor Scott's definition of working well together and very strong proposal, slightly different to other people's. His sounds more Watfordy. Um, the mine, anyway. But as I said on Friday, I did hear that FIFA left this decision very, very late, right down to the hours before the broadcast. Boston, whose king, Robert Kraft, has a long relationship with FIFA. And let's just say he knows enough to realise that the number of bank trucks you back up to the loading dock of FIFA headquarters is essentially correlates with the decisions. Boston won out um, at the very last, I feel bloody terrible for the football community in that area and I feel for Baltimore especially you know it's a Liverpudlium you know my city in England for decades always gets a bad rap you know always is written off always stereotyped I feel the same I watch how Baltimore you know the stereotypes about that city this was a moment when they could have really truly been shattered and Baltimore just a beautiful glorious tenacious city could have really announced itself to the world. I feel a pain in this moment. We got a long raven from GFOP Dwight Smith, who wrote the following. David, yeah. do the honours. This is not an original thought, uh, Dwight wrote, but you may have to live in Washington, D.C. to fully appreciate the snub of D.C. Baltimore. The original proposal was to play some matches at FedEx Field, the loathed stadium of the Washington Commanders NFL team. The team is owned by Dan Snyder. <laughs> Think of the worst owner in the EPL. I know there may be more than one option. Double the awfulness and you will approach the commanders. FIFA nixed FedEx field long ago because the conditions of the field were too bad. Thus, the late in the day partnership with Baltimore. Spare a thought for Baltimore. No doubt the wire will be the first thing that comes to mind for most of your readers. But speaking as someone who was born there, it is a wonderful city. World Cup visitors will now miss out on the Maryland Blue Crab, the accompanying Old Bay seasoning and being called Hun. By a waitress. The latter's <laughs> going a little out of style, but if you can get the hun, you will have found your Baltimore. Yours in soccer. Yours in soccer, Dwight Smith. Yeah, sadly, FIFA don't care about your crab, City of Baltimore, but I do, and I cannot wait, cannot wait to eat, oh, eat all your bloody crab July 14th. Listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods, but first, subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage.